Hello, I'm Mohamed Chinara. In today's video, we will be reviewing the radiological anatomy of the temporal bone. You might recognize this image from our earlier video on skull base foramina. During this video, we touched on these structures here, the open-ended triangles that comprise the internal acoustic meati. Here is the left internal acoustic meatus, and here is the right internal acoustic meatus. On this slice, you can see the semicircular canal arising from the vestibule. You can also see the ossicles within the middle ear. On the left, you'll see a similar appearance. Here is the left vestibule, and arising from it, you can see a semicircular canal. Here's the left middle ear containing gas, and within it, you see the left ossicles. The aerated portion of the temporal bone extending over in this location is called the mastoid cavity, and it contains a number of air cells called the mastoid air cells. You can see the right mastoid air cells here. To look at the anatomy in a bit more detail, let's have a look at a coronal bone enhanced slice to highlight the semicircular canals and cochlea in a bit more detail. Here is the vestibule and arising from it you can see several semicircular canals being indicated by the arrow. Another component of the inner ear structure is the cochlea and it has this typical two and a half turns that gives it this spiral shaped appearance. You can see it being outlined now. Once again, here are the ossicles within the middle ear. Here is the external auditory canal. This is an MRI scan, specifically protocoled in a way to accentuate the important structures at the level of the internal acoustic meati. Taking an overall look at this image first, just to get your bearings correct, here is the right orbit, here is part of the left orbit, here is the left maxillary sinus, here is the right maxillary sinus. You can see a portion of the right temporal lobe here. Here is the brainstem, the left cerebellar hemisphere, and the right cerebellar hemisphere. And you'll notice the very classic molar tooth shaped appearance of the fourth ventricle. At this level, you can see the MR equivalent of the open-ended triangle. This is the right internal acoustic meatus. Let's magnify this image and have a look at it on the right. It's exactly the same image, and you can see the structures described previously. Fourth ventricle, pons, these are the large middle cerebellar peduncles and the cerebellar hemisphere. Let's focus our attention now to the contents of the right internal acoustic meatus. I hope you'll be able to appreciate that there are two linear structures entering into the right internal acoustic meatus. The most anterior of this is the facial nerve. The more posteriorly located is the vestibulocochlear nerve. This is a similar image, although the plane of the image has been slightly adjusted to help highlight and identify the neural structure that we're now going to review. You can still see the right facial and vestibulocochlear nerves entering into the right internal acoustic meatus. You will notice a very similar structure of a similar signal intensity heading anteriorly from the pons towards the middle cranial fossa. Here is the structure on the right, and here is the structure on the left. Have a think at what these are for two seconds before I tell you. These are the trigeminal nerves. They head anteriorly and enter Meckel's cave before going on to divide into the ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular divisions en route to their various different structures. Thanks for watching. I trust this was useful for you. Please get in touch if you have any further or specific queries.